Welcome to Reading with Leon. We are going to read The Wizard of Oz by L. Frank Baum and illustrated by Phil Wilson. Okay, let's go. Chapter 1, The Cyclone. Dorothy lived in the midst of the great Kansas purse. That's where Leon and I live. We're in Kansas. She lives with her Uncle Henry and Auntie M. Auntie M and Uncle Henry were as gray as the prairie. I don't see great prairies here, but we'll go with what they're saying. And they never laughed. You gotta laugh. Laughing's important. It was Toto, a little black dog, that made Dorothy laugh. And they played together all day long. Today, however, they were not playing. From the far north, they heard a low wail of wind. There's a cyclone coming, Em, said Uncle Henry. Run for the cellar, screamed Auntie M. Dorothy caught Toto and started to follow her aunt. And then a strange thing happened. The house whirled around and around and rose slowly into the air. In the middle of the cyclone, the house was carried miles and miles away. Dorothy felt as if she were being rocked gently like a baby in a cradle. In spite of the swaying of the house and the wailing of the wind, Dorothy soon closed her eyes and fell asleep. Oh, there's the cyclone. Not yet. We're reading, honey. Mama. Dorothy was wakened by a shock and let out a cry of amazement. Oh! The cyclone had set the house down in the midst of a country of marvelous beauty. Coming toward her was a group of the queerest people that she had ever seen. They seemed about as tall as Dorothy, although they looked many years older. A lovely little woman made a low bow and said, You are welcome, most noble sorceress, to the land of the munchkins. We are so grateful to you for having killed the Wicked Witch of the East. I have not killed anything, said Dorothy. Your house did, replied the little old woman with a laugh. Ha ha ha. There are her two silver shoes still sticking out. Oh dear, cried Dorothy. She has held the munchkins in bondage for many years. Now they are set free and they are grateful to you. Are you a munchkin, asked Dorothy. No, but I am their friend. I am the Witch of the North. But I thought all witches were wicked, said the girl. Oh, no. There are only four witches in all the land of Oz. And those who live in the north and the south are good witches. Those who dwell in the east and the west are indeed wicked. But now you have killed one of them. Here is a picture of the house where it fell down. That was chapter two. No, we're still on chapter two. Chapter two, part two. Okay, suddenly the munchkins gave a loud shout. Yay! The feet of the dead witch had disappeared entirely, and nothing was left but the silver shoes. That is the end of her, said the wicked witch of the north. The silver shoes are yours. There's a secret charm connected with them. I'm anxious to get back to my aunt and uncle in Kansas. Can you help me find my way, asked Dorothy? Go to the city of emeralds. Perhaps the great wizard can help you, said the witch of the north. I will give you my kiss, and no one will dare injure you. Where the lips touched the girl, they left a round, shining mark. She then whirled around three times and disappeared, much to the surprise of little Toto. Bark, bark. Bark, bark, yeah. Suddenly, Dorothy set about making ready for the journey to the city of emeralds. She tried on the silver shoes, which fitted her well, as if they had been made for her. Come along, Toto, she said, and she began walking briskly towards the Emerald City, her silver shoes tinkling merrily on the yellow road. And there's a picture of the yellow road. When Dorothy had gone several miles, she saw a scarecrow placed high on a pole. She was surprised to see that one of the eyes slowly winked at her. Good day, said the scarecrow in a rather husky voice. Did you speak, asked the girl with wonder. Certainly, answered the scarecrow. It is very tedious being perched up here night and day to scare away crows. Dorothy lifted the figure off the pole. 
My name is Dorothy, and I am going to the Emerald City to ask the great Oz to send me back to Kansas. Where is Emerald City? he inquired. Why, don't you know? she asked in surprise. I'm stuffed. I have no brains at all, he answered sadly. Do you think the great wizard could give me some brains? I cannot tell, she returned, but you may come with me if you like. They started along the path of the yellow brick, and soon they came to a great forest. Dorothy was startled to hear a deep groan. There, with an uplifted axe in his hands, was a man made entirely of tin. Did you groan? asked Dorothy. Yes, answered the tin woodman. Can you get that oil can and oil my joints? They are rusted so badly I cannot move them at all. Dorothy and the Scarecrow oiled his joints until he could move freely. You have certainly saved my life, he said. It's nice to help people out. We are on our way to the Emerald City to see the Great Oz. I want him to send me back to Kansas, and the Scarecrow wants him to put a few brains into his head. Do you suppose the Oz could give me a heart? asked the Tin Woodsman. Come along, said the Scarecrow heartily. Excuse me. Dorothy and the current companions kept walking through the thick woods. Now and then there came a deep growl from among the trees. Suddenly a great lion bounded into the road. With one blow of his paw, he sent the scarecrow spinning over. And then he struck the tin woodsman and little Toto ran barking, bark, 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 towards the lion. And the great beast opened his mouth to bite him. When Dorothy rushed forward and slapped the lion upon his nose, you ought to be ashamed of yourself, a big beast like you, to bite a poor little dog. You are nothing but a big coward. I know it, said the lion, hanging his head. We are all going to the great Oz, said the scarecrow. Do you think Oz could give me some courage? Whoops, almost dropped the book. You are very welcome to come with us, answered Dorothy. Hopefully she told him no more biting. <laughs> no, be nice, Leon. Be nice. Don't hit Avery. Avery, no, be gentle. Come here, Avery. Come here. Yeah, there you go. No, no. No, you be nice to Avery. That's owie. So once more, the little company set off upon the long journey, and finally they found themselves in the midst of a great meadow of poppies. Every time I hear the word puppies, I go, puppies, 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 puppies. Aren't they beautiful, Dorothy asked, as she breathed in the spicy scent of the flowers. Suddenly, her eyes grew very heavy, and she could no longer stand. She fell upon the puppies, fast asleep, run the scarecrow towards the, told the lion, and get out of this deadly flower bed as soon as you can. So the lion bounded away while the scarecrow and tin man carried Dorothy and Toto ow, out of the poppy ow, field. Ow, ow, Here's ow. a picture of the lion. <coughs> what? <coughs> no, be nice to Avery. Be gentle. Let go of Avery's ear. Yeah, those are Avery's ears. Be gentle with Avery's ears. Chapter 4, The Emerald City. After Dorothy and Toto had awakened, they turned again towards the Emerald City. They came to a big gate, all studded with brilliant emeralds. We came here to see the Great Oz, said Dorothy. The guardian of the gate led them through the streets of green marble and glittering emeralds until they came to the Palace of Oz, the Great Wizard. We're going to put that down there because... That's dangerous. Keep sitting the puppy. Please make yourselves comfortable while I go to the throne room and tell Oz that you are here. They had to wait a long time before the guardian returned. He says he will see you, although he does not like to have people ask to see him. Indeed, at first he was angry, but when I mentioned your silver shoes, he was very much interested. When I told him about the mark upon your forehead, he decided he would admit you. Dorothy walked boldly to the door and found herself in a big round room covered with large emeralds. In the center of the mobile th- marble throne room was an enormous head without a body. What happened to his body? I am Oz, the great and terrible, 
Who are you and why do you seek me? I am Dorothy, the small and meek. I have come to ask you to send me back to Kansas. Not unless you do something for me in return. Kill the wicked witch of the West. But I cannot, exclaimed Dorothy. You killed the witch of the East and wear the silver shoes. Now go and do not ask to see me again until you have done your task. Dorothy went to her room and cried herself to sleep. And the next day, Scarecrow was admitted into the throne room. I am Oz, the great and terrible. Who are you and why do you seek me? I am only a scarecrow, stuffed with straw. I came to you praying you would put brains in my head. If you kill the wicked witch of the West, I will bestow upon you a great many brains. Now go and do not seek me again until you have earned the brains you so greatly desire. The next day, the tin woodman was summoned to the throne room. I am Oz the Great and Terrible, he said in a great roar. Who are you and why do you seek me? I am a woodman and made of tin. I pray you to give me a heart. Help Dorothy kill the Wicked Witch of the West, replied the wizard. When the witch is dead, I will give you the biggest and kindest heart in all the land of Oz. The next morning, the guardian bade the lion to enter the presence of Oz. Nope, Mama's reading. Before the throne was a ball of fire and glowing, he could scarcely bear to gaze upon it. I am Oz the Great and Terrible. Who are you and why do you seek me? I am a cowardly lion afraid of everything. I beg you to give me courage. Bring me proof of the wicked that the wicked witch is dead. In that moment, I will give you courage. The ball of fire became so furiously hot that the lion turned tail and rushed out of the room. Yeah? See the eyes? No, 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 no pushing. See eyes? Yeah? What shall we do now? asked Dorothy sadly. There is only one thing we can do. Reminded the lion, or returned the lion, and that is to go to the land of the Winkies, seek out the wicked witch, and destroy her. So the next morning, the guardian ah. opened the gate. There is no road, answered the guardian of gates. No one ever wishes to go that way. Keep to the west where the sun sets, and you will find her. There's that big ball of fire. Ew. Number five, the wicked witch of the west. The wicked witch of the rest had but one eye, yet that was so that was as powerful as a telescope, and she could see everywhere. She was very angry to find Dorothy and her friends in her country. She owned a golden crown that had a charm. Whoever owned it could call three times upon the winged monkeys, who would obey any order they were given. Twice already the wicked witch had used the charm of the crown. Now she put it on her head and set a magic spell. And soon the witch was surrounded by a crowd of monkeys. Go to the strangers who are within my land and destroy them all except the lions of the Wicked Witch. Bring that beast to me. The winged monkeys flew away to the place where Dorothy and her friends were walking. Some of the monkeys seized the tin man and dropped him on some sharp rocks. Ow! where he lay battered and dented. Others caught Scarecrow and pulled all the straw out of his clothes and head. That's not very nice. They threw his remains into the branches of a tall tree. The remaining monkeys tied up the lion and flew away with him to the witch's castle, where he was imprisoned behind a high iron fence. But Dorothy they did not harm at all because they saw the mark of the good witch's kiss upon her forehead. There's the picture of the witch and the monkeys. Carefully and gently, they carried her to the castle. Then the leader said to the witch, Your power over our band is now ended, and you will never see us again. Then all the winged monkeys flew out of sight. The witch was both surprised and worried when she saw the mark on Dorothy's forehead and the silver shoes upon her feet. But the wicked witch laughed herself. Ha! <laughs> 
I can still make her my slave, for she does not know how to use her power. Come with me, she said harshly, and see that you mind everything I tell you, or I will make an end of you. Dorothy followed her to the kitchen, where the witch bade her to clean the pots and the kettles and sweep the floor and keep the fire fed with wood. The wicked witch had a great longing for the silver shoes, but the child was so proud of them that she never took them off. So the witch placed an invisible bar in the middle of the floor, so Dorothy stumbled over it and one of the silver shoes came off. Before she could reach it, the witch snatched it away. Give me back my shoe. Now it is my shoe, retorted the witch, and I shall get the other one from you too. This made Dorothy so angry that she picked up a bucket of water and dashed it over the witch. See what you have done, she screamed. In a minute I shall melt away. With these words, the witch fell down in a brown, shapeless mass and began to spread over the floor. Dorothy ran to tell the lion. There was great rejoicing among, among the yellow winkies, who said they would be delighted to help rescue the scarecrow and the tin woodman. After they were reunited, Dorothy and her friends spent a few happy days at the yellow castle. But one day, Dorothy thought of Auntie M and said, we must go back to Oz and claim his promise. Chapter 6, The Return to Emerald City. The Winkies were sorry to have them go, and they had grown so fond of the Tin Woman that they begged him to stay and rule over them. As they started for the Emerald City, the Winkies gave them three cheers, hooray, 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 and many good wishes. The journey back was long and treacherous, so one of the Winkies suggested that Dorothy use the gold crown. She summoned the monkeys, who arrived with great chattering and flapping of the wings. Ooh, 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 ah! They rode through the air quite cheerfully and soon saw the green, shining walls of Emerald City. The guardian of the gate was very surprised to hear that they had melted the Wicked Witch of the West. He carried the news to Oz, but Oz made no reply. After several days, they were so tired of waiting that the Scarecrow asked that another message be delivered to Oz, saying that if he did not let them in to see him at once, they would call the Winked Monkeys to help him. The wizard was so frightened that he sent word for them to come to the throne room the next morning. Back in the throne room, they were greatly surprised when they looked about and saw no one in the room. Then they heard a voice seeming to come from the top of the dome. I am Oz the Great and Terrible. Is the Wicked Witch really destroyed? Yes, Dorothy answered. I melted her with a bucket of water. Well, come back to me tomorrow, said the voice. You've had plenty of time already, said the Tin Woodman angrily. The lion gave such a loud roar, roar, that Toto jumped away and tipped over the screen that stood in the corner. Standing there was a little old man who seemed just as surprised as they were. Who are you? asked the tin woman, raising his up. I am Oz the Great and Terrible, said the little man. You're a humbug, said the scarecrow. Exactly so, said the little man. And he told them how he used tricks to appear in different disguises and how he had come to the land of Oz. I was born in Omaha where I became a balloonist and worked at a circus. One day I went up in a balloon and the ropes got twisted so I could not get back down. I eventually came down in the midst of strange people who, seeing me come from the clouds, thought I was a great wizard. So I let them believe it. I think you are a very bad man, said Dorothy. I am really a very good man, but I am a very bad wizard, I must admit. Can't you give me brains, asked the scarecrow. How about my courage, asked the lion. And how about my heart, asked the tin woodman. And how am I to get back to Kansas, asked Dorothy. Give me two or three days, said the wizard. When the wizard was ready, they all went to see him again. And there's the little wizard. The wizard presented scarecrow with a report card marked with a grade of A pluses. This proves that you have excellent brains, said the wizard. I feel very wise indeed, said the scarecrow. The wizard turned to the tin woman and cut a square hole in the tin and placed a pretty silk heart inside. Now you have a heart that any man might be proud of. 
Then the wizard asked the lion to drink from a green bottle labeled courage. How do you feel now? asked Oz. Full of courage, replied the lion. The wizard then placed a gold crown on the lion's head. You may now take your rightful place as king of the beasts. Then he turned to Dorothy. I think I have found the way to get you out of this country. We shall go by balloon. Oz got into the basket of the balloon and said to all the people, I am now going away to make a visit. While I am gone, while I am gone, the scarecrow will rule over you. The balloon was by this time tugging hard at the rope that held it to the ground. Come, Dorothy, cried the wizard. Hurry up or the balloon will fly away. Dorothy picked up Toto and rose towards the balloon when crack went the ropes and the balloon rose into the air without her. Oh no, come back, she screamed. I can't come back, my dear, called Oz. Goodbye. Dorothy wept bitterly. The question was now how to get back to Kansas without the wizard. Why not call the Winged Monkey, she said. Dorothy got the crown and spoke the magic words, and soon the band of Winged Monkeys flew to her. I want you to fly me to Kansas, said Dorothy. The Monkey King shook his head. That cannot be done. We belong to this country alone and cannot leave it. With a bow, the monkeys flew away. Dorothy was ready to cry. Is there no one who can help me? Linda might, suggested the guardian of the gate. She is the witch of the south and is the most powerful of all the witches. And suddenly the witch Glinda appeared, sitting upon a throne of rubies. Although she was very old, she looked beautiful and young. What can I do for you, my child? She asked Dorothy. Dorothy told the witch her story. My greatest wish now is to get back to Kansas, for Aunt Em will surely think something dreadful has happened to me. I can tell you of a way to get back to Kansas, but you must give me the golden crown. Willingly, exclaimed Dorothy. The witch said to the scarecrow, What will you do when Dorothy leaves? I will stay in the Emerald City, for Oz had made me its ruler, and the people like me. She asked the tin woodman, what will become of you when Dorothy leaves? He thought for a moment and said, the Winkies were very kind to me and wanted me to rule over them after the Wicked Witch died. I should like nothing better. No, stop, honey. I shall command the Winked Monkeys to carry you safely to the land of the Winkies. Then the witch looked at the big shaggy lion and said, what will become of you? There's the balloon. Over the hill lies a grand old forest. If I could get back there and be their king, I should pass my life very happily. My next command to the winged monkey, said Glinda, shall be to carry you to your forest. Then I shall give the golden crown to the king of the monkeys, so he and his band may be free. You are certainly as good as you are beautiful, said Dorothy, but you have not told me how to get back to Kansas. Your silver shoes will carry you over the desert. All you have to do is knock the heels together three times and, the com and command the shoes to carry you wherever you wish to go. Dorothy hugged the lion, the tin man, and the scarecrow. Glenda the good gave the little girl a kiss goodbye. Then Dorothy took Toto up in her arms and clapped the heels of her shoes together, saying three times, Take me home to Aunt Em. Instantly, Dorothy was swirling swiftly through the air, and she stopped suddenly, rolling over upon the grass several times. She was sitting on the broad Kansas prairie, and just before her was the new farmhouse Uncle Henry built. And Em looked up and saw Dorothy running towards her. My darling child, she cried, covering her face with kisses. Where did you come from? From the land of Oz, said Dorothy, and oh, Aunt Em, I'm so glad to be home again. I hope you guys enjoyed that, and you guys have a great day. Bye. Say bye-bye, Neon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, bye-bye.